This week in science, we have to talk about Russia. Now, ever since the rise of the Soviet Union, that part of the world has been a major player in the scientific community. Even today, Russia has a role in some of humanity's biggest and most expensive science projects, but on February 24th, the country invaded Ukraine, and that changed things. Science is supposed to be apolitical, transcending individual cultures, traditions, and governments, but opposition to Russia's invasion has been swift and severe, so its involvement in international science collaborations has become more complicated. Take the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, which is home to the world's largest particle smashing machine. Its 23 member states have officially condemned the invasion, suspended Russia's observer status at the lab, and announced they will not launch any new collaborations with the country. But UBC science professor Alexei Kajevnikov points out that when tensions were high during the Cold War, science collaborations could be a useful back channel for diplomacy. Sometimes certain tasks that could not be done by mainstream diplomacy uh, could be done by, uh, or anyway, it was useful to keep a, a backside route and possibilities so it was, uh, to negotiate. Another big pressure point right now is the International Space Station, which only operates because the Russian and American segments work in tandem. The U.S. side provides power to the Russian side, which has the thrusters required to keep the station in orbit. And while it's been business as usual up there so far, the head of the Russian space agency has been making veiled threats about stranding American astronauts on the station. Long term, if Russia pulls out, the station may have to be decommissioned years ahead of schedule. It is my feeling indeed that uh, this collaboration was established uh, precisely as a symbol uh, of a time when uh, the danger of nuclear war is not considered to be as strong. Uh, and ending that collaboration uh, would practically, again, symbolically also probably kind of mean that the danger is back. There have also been calls for Russia to be banned from ITER, the nuclear fusion mega project being built in southern France. But Russia is a founding member, which means there's not really a way to do that. And so far, ITER's leadership has not said anything about the invasion. Russian scientists, meanwhile, are speaking out. Thousands have signed on to an open letter condemning what they call an unjust and frankly senseless war, one which will make it harder for them to do their jobs. It's a bold move, given that the Russian government has made even calling it a war punishable by up to 15 years in prison. With This Week in Science, Curtis Doring, City News.